Hi, and welcome to Ask TensorFlow, the show where you get to ask questions about TensorFlow and we will try to answer them. My name is Magnus Itzten. I work as a developer advocate on the TensorFlow team. And I'm Lawrence Moroni, also a developer advocate on the team. So let's get started. The first question is from Bernd Verst on Twitter. And the question is, how about advice on a suitable data set for a learning experience on TensorFlow? That's a great question. Yes, it is. There's a few that are great for starting. There's always Kaggle who has lots of open data sets that you can use. So if you don't have a user account on Kaggle, you should definitely check it out. Also, models that are bundled with TensorFlow. You can find these in the TensorFlow slash models GitHub directory. And many of them are from well-known AI slash ML problems, including things like the MNIST data set, which is really the uh, hello world of machine learning to, well, that allows you to help classify handwritten digits. It can even detect my handwriting. <laughs> That's doing something. There is also a tutorial called Wide and Deep that uses census data from the UC Irvine machine learning repository. Indeed, you can find lots of data sets in that repository to play with. I actually found one um, for a tutorial that I was writing, and it was from the West Wisconsin Breast Cancer Research Data, and that was in the UC Irvine Machine Learning Repository. So I wrote a tutorial around that, and you can see it in the links underneath. So the next question comes from Nat Colley on Twitter, and Nat asks, can I retrain a model to recognize an object as something else? For example, if it sees a sunflower and I want to classify that as a weed instead. So this all falls into something that we call retraining. And the concept of retraining removes the last layer, which contains the class labels, and allows you to relearn it with your own labels. Now, it's too long for me to explain it here, but fortunately, we have something called the TensorFlow for Poets Code Lab. I've put a link in the description below. In that code lab, you'll take a look at the standard MobileNet code lab and retrain it specifically for flowers. I'd strongly recommend looking into that and having a play with it. Yeah, it's a very common technique. In fact, you can train a model quite easily with not so many examples using this kind of methodology. Which speeds things up too, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the next question is from Carm on Twitter. And the question is, what's your best advice for a computer science student to begin in AI slash ML? The top three things to do. Top three. It's hard to think of just three, right? Yeah. But three it is. Well, so I think a clear number one is to learn Python. And not just for ML, but also because it's a staggeringly cool and useful language. I can't believe the things I've been able to achieve uh, since I learned it. And it's used everywhere in machine learning uh, and data science. So my, my number two, um, after I've learned Python, would be to study some of the math that's used in ML. And it might be they go, oh, I don't want to learn math. But it's really not that bad. And the two parts of math that I'd really look into, number one would be regression. So regression is all around fitting a line to points in two dimension or a plane to points in three dimensions, as well as getting into higher order dimensions. And then the other one is matrices and understanding how matrices fit the picture for handling this higher order dimensional math. So how to multiply and transpose matrices and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. How about number three? Number three. My number three would then be to practice on simple examples. And there are some great data sets out there. As we mentioned at the top of the show, you should download them, play with them in a spreadsheet sheet and do correlations and stuff. And then you should load them into a machine learning model to see if you can do some classification. Mm -hmm. And above all, have fun with it. Yeah. Uh, and there's it's, so many amazing things you can do uh, yeah. with even quite simple models. Uh, so you should really go out there and just try things out. And if you love what you do, you'll do what you love. Yeah. All right. So next question. Um, this one comes from Mitsuki in Tokyo. And uh, Mitsuki asks, at I.O. last year, we heard about TPUs. When and how will they be available? Well, arigato, Mitsuki. That's a fabulous question. And fortunately, it's really easy to answer because they're now available for you to play with in beta. There are details of the URL at the blog post that I've linked underneath. Now, with some of the things we've had, there's some really, really impressive power available. So the TPUs that are available on the cloud platform will pack up to 180 teraflops of floating point performance and about 64 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory on a single board. 180 teraflops. 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 That's a, that's a giga gigaflop, right? 
That's a lot of flops. So uh, we actually did a test on one of these, and it trained ResNet 50 in less than a day. And when we actually posted the first blog post about this, we said it cost less than $200 in total. We've actually been doing retraining since then, and it's come closer to $100 in total to train a complete ResNet 50. So how does this work? Well, TPU usage is paid for by the second, so the faster you go, effectively, the cheaper it is. And we have a tutorial about using TPUs to train ResNet, and it's at a link underneath. I'd love to hear what you're planning to do and the type of machine learning you're going to be doing. So thanks, everybody. Again, a lot of really, really fun questions, some great stuff that we've been able to look into. We hope we've been able to help you with answers to these questions. I'm Lawrence, and this is Magnus. And remember, if you've got any more questions for us, please leave them in the comments below. Or better still, post them on social media with the hashtag AskTensorFlow, and we'll be here to answer them for you. Thank you so much. Thank <music> you.